Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we have got a couple of news stories to get through to round off the week. The first is concerning NVIDIA's upcoming GPU architecture and when we can actually expect to see that in the hands of consumers, which might disappoint some of you out there that have been waiting for it. And to follow that up, we have a rumor concerning AMD's upcoming Ryzen Plus launch in April and some leaked specs on the Ryzen 7 2700X. But we're going to first start off with the NVIDIA news over on Tom's Hardware, where they have posted up a report after talking to several insiders in the industry that looks like the upcoming architecture, which we really don't know what it's called yet. It's people are like, oh, is it Volta? Is it Ampere? Is it Touring? We've kind of talked about it. We've speculated up until this point. Well, according to Tom's Hardware, the Volca, Volta architecture is going to continue rolling out for the business and professional side of things, for servers and things along those lines. And Ampere might actually continue to roll out as well for the server side stuff, but might not see a consumer offshoot anytime in the near future, while Touring could very well be the next GPU architecture we get, but it probably won't be until around August, or that might be the announcement in August. Now, when it comes to GTC, which will be held at the end of March, they have said that it, it seems more likely that NVIDIA might just announce this architecture and kind of update their roadmaps for future GPU lineups for consumers, but it's very likely just going to be a soft announcement, nothing really hard and concrete, and probably not going to see actual graphics cards. That'll be reserved towards the end of summer. So we're probably looking at these cards coming out in the third quarter of 2018, which I'm sure is disappointing to many of you out there that have been waiting for NVIDIA to push these out and maybe get yourself a new graphics card if you've been waiting a while to upgrade, but it's just going to be a bit longer. Um, they even said that the ma the manufacturers of the add-in board partners um, have kind of been waiting for the final specification so that they could start working on their boards for these GPUs, but that's been pushed back, and they're not expecting to get them until May, and production probably won't ramp up until around June, so we have a few months to go before they even start ramping up production on these new graphics cards from NVIDIA, but this does make a lot of sense that they are trying to segment the market and do like the Touring and the Ampere and the Volta and having it separated for different types of market segments. This will be a lot cheaper for NVIDIA in the long run as they won't have to put everything as an all-in-one architecture onto one board and they'll actually just be able to get rid of a lot of, a lot of the features that they needed for the server-side stuff from the consumer cards and focus on giving the consumers what they need. And who knows, maybe this could even help out with the whole cryptocurrency mining thing if what they're putting on the consumer graphics cards for games Gaming might not have what is best for miners. Maybe they might have to go towards the server side stuff, which doesn't necessarily mean getting rid of, you know, display outs on the back of the card, which some people have talked about. Like if they segment it, um, if they take away, you know, the display outs, then it's going to be completely useless for miners because they won't be able to resell them. Well, I don't think they're going to go that aggressive with it. I'm pretty sure they'll still give miners display outs so they can hook it up to a display at the very least. But we just might see the with certain parts of the board, you know, just removed because it won't be necessary necessary for consumers to have that on there for gaming purposes. And you might be wondering why is NVIDIA pushing back this launch so far until the third quarter of 2018? Well, if you think about it, they really don't have much of a reason to push out a gaming-centric card right now for the games that are out there, and also they're not seeing much pressure from AMD. They had RX Vega release at the end of last summer, but we really haven't heard much from AMD in regards to that from the RTG team um, ever since Raja Kadori left, and they're kind of reformulating their plans over there for their next coming GPUs, which should be Navi, but we haven't really heard anything about those yet, and RX Vega cards are pretty much impossible to find, and as you guys know, they kind of came out a year late. They should have been here at some point in 2016 to compete with the 10 series rather than coming out in 2017 where the 10 series had already been out there in the market for a long time and people were buying those cards as they were readily available at the time. It's not like it is now where you're having to pay through the nose for them even if you can find them. Back then they were affordable, they were MSRP and they were what they should be and they were dominating the market, no doubt about it. They were whooping AMD's ASS. So yeah, that's pretty much it on the upcoming architecture. I wish it was coming out sooner, but yeah, we'll have to wait a bit longer for that. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. Our next news story, which is a rumor, just to be 100%, you know, clear about that. This is a leaked benchmark from 3 Mark that had been found by a certain YouTuber, and then it was posted up on ComputerBase.d, which is a German tech website, really good site, usually trust pretty much everything that they do. 
But then again, it is very easy to fake a 3D Mark um, database score and make it look like different hardware is in the system that's actually in there. So as I said, it's a rumor, take it with a grain of salt, but it's interesting to at least speculate on what we are seeing from the hardware in here um, on the 2700X, which will be the predecessor or the successor, I should say, to the 1700X, which came out last year. Eight cores, 16 threads, nothing's really changing there. Really, the, they've improved the efficiency. They're going with Precision Boost 2.0 now, and it looks like higher clock speed. So we got a nice little table over here on Guru 3D, which is comparing that 1700X to the 2700X. As I said, eight cores, 16 threads, nothing changes there. Still using 16 megabytes of L3 cache. Both are 95 watt TDP parts, although I am expecting to see a 1700 non-X variant at 65 watts, which would probably be the best one for me, honestly. Um, from the last year's lineup, I thought the X series CPUs were pretty pointless for anyone that knows how to overclock themselves. And not only that, the other ones that had the non-X actually had a lower TDP. So the X variants for me were just kind of pointless as I know how to easily overclock up to what those are rated for. But for people that aren't going to overclock, then I guess it's a good pickup. But yeah, for me, I, I preferred the non-X variants of Ryzen. And I probably will again on this generation unless we see some sort of sub substantial uh, performance uplift or overclocking ca capability on the X variants. I see myself going for the 2700 again this time around. For the clock speed, this is really the biggest news that we have here. Previously, it was at 3.4 gigahertz on the base, and now it's up to 3.7 gigahertz, according to this leak. And for the turbo clock, we're going from 3.8 gigahertz up to 4.1 gigahertz. So that's amazing. A 300 megahertz, 300 megahertz increase over the previous generation, which is going to see many people picking these up, if the rumor is true, rocking over 4 gigahertz straight out of the box. That's awesome. That's really awesome for Ryzen, uh, seeing them at four gigahertz, which makes me excited to see the overclocking potential. If we can get that up to maybe 4.3, 4.4, 4.5 on a good day, then that's gonna be great. That's gonna be a huge step up from the previous generation where I if I was lucky, if I was able to get four gigahertz out of mine, of all of the Ryzen's actually, and I know some people out there were able to get like 4.1, um, but 4.0, 3.9 was really more realistic to what to expect out of a Ryzen CPU in 2017, but seeing these at 4.1 out of the box just gives me a lot of hope and I'm excited to see these launch in April. That's what AMD is saying they're coming out. That's not a rumor, that's, that's a fact. It's what AMD has said when they're coming out. So we'll just have to wait and see on those. Let me th know what you think about the higher clock speed on the new Ryzen 7 2700X and also the Nvidia graphics cards and how they might not be coming out until at least August of this year or at least even announced in August, probably rolling out in September. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here, guys. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below so that we can discuss the news amongst ourselves. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, don't forget to leave a like on it down below and subscribe if you're not already. That's the little red button. If, in case you in case you weren't sure, it's like a red button right below this video. It's a little tiny red button. You just gotta click it, just click on it. And if you are subscribed, there's even a little bell next to that. You can click on the bell and then you'll know when I upload more videos. How great is that? How great is that? It's amazing. It's amazing. You can get notified right now. You don't even need to wait for the new NVIDIA cards to come out. You can you can do that today. Isn't that amazing? Incredible. Incredible, really. Fascinating. But yeah, this is getting awkward. So I'm going to leave. Ta-ra. Ah!